Still there. I mean, these things are fragile. You gotta be careful you don't blow them off. So you're selling your home and the inspector has flagged separation of grounds and neutrals. Grounds and neutrals must be separated after the first means of disconnect. Violation found in the sub panel. Let me tell you what, I'm working on a house. I've upgraded the service. I now have an exterior disconnect and this original panel has gone from a main panel to a sub panel. And since it's a sub panel, these grounds and neutrals here, the white and copper conductors terminated to these bars right here, they must be separated. I'm gonna leave, because those are insulated bars, I'm gonna leave the neutrals there and I'm gonna lift all the grounds up and I'm gonna install them at the top behind these conductors on this new terminal bar right here. So let me show you how that's done. So I've got a set like this that is a Greenlee tap set. It's a drill tapping all-in-one kit. I'm using the 832 because that's the right size. If you buy a ground bar, it comes in packaging like this. Open up the packaging, extricate your, your ground bar, and the mounting screws that'll pop right through those holes are included. The trick is you've got to line up your ground bar. See, now this is live right now. So I'm gonna turn this off. Those terminals are still live. So quick bit about safety. One, you need to know the codes and standards in your area. Two, you need to have test equipment so you can confirm that things are de-energized. Three, when you de-energize the main panel, everything here down is de-energized. But you have to understand, these live terminals are still energized. Those are 200 amp, 240 volt terminals. There is plenty there to kill you. I've shut off the exterior disconnect. I've de-energized these conductors. I've checked with test equipment to make sure they're de-energized. And now I'm gonna mount my ground bar. It's pretty tight. There's not a lot of room to work. I wanna make sure I'm not on that label. Most of my conductivity is gonna be in the form of um, through the screws, but I don't want my ground bar to be on the label. Now this is an enamel surface, so there's not a lot of a lot there, but I want to get what I can. I want my, my ground terminal bar to be bonded, electrically bonded to my panel. Yes, still there. I mean, these things are fragile. You gotta be careful you don't blow them off. Sometimes I'll uh, drill it with a separate bit and I'll tap it out by hand instead of using power equipment in order to prevent snapping off my tap because this set right here is about $45. Check the description. Now I have made a separate purchase and I've bought a two aught compatible lug and I'm gonna add that lug to this ground bar. It's the same manufacturer, it's made to go right in there and that's gonna allow me to terminate this big aluminum conductor. Now when you're terminating aluminum conductors, one thing you need to know is that special measures are required. This is a Nolox, it's a uh, no Aluminum oxidation is an antioxidation compound and it's required to be brushed into aluminum conductors. I'm just going to put it on the end, brush it into the point, wire brush it into the point of termination and that's going to prevent it from getting that white, chalky, high resistance oxidation. All right, well, that's the basics of it. You wanna take all of the grounding conductors, all of the green or copper conductors, and put them one at a time on each of these terminal screws. So plan accordingly how many grounding conductors you have, how many terminal screws are going to be available, and make sure you allow one each. The only time you can put two grounding conductors on one terminal screw is when the terminal screw is explicitly rated for two or more conductors of that size. If you are putting two conductors, never put two dissimilar conductors together, i.e. aluminum and copper. That dielectric union will cause corrosion, potentially overheating. Also, never put two differently sized conductors together. If you have a larger 10 gauge conductor with a smaller 14 gauge conductor, works just like shotgun shells, then 
That 10 gauge conductor will get clamped and pinched down, but that 14 gauge conductor will still slide in and out because it has a substantially smaller diameter and you won't have the proper compression on it. If you've got the op opportunity to use a torque screwdriver to torque those terminals down to the prescribed value that is provided in the packaging, by all means do so. And then of course, Make sure the power is de-energized before you work in a situation like this. It's relatively tedious to, and time consuming to pull all of those grounds off and relocate them. Um, the location of the ground bar is, uh, is up to you based upon where you've got the most access and where those grounding conductors are going to reach. If I put the ground bar at the bottom, I'd be pigtailing and jumping all of these conductors all the way down to the bottom and my sides are too tight. Too many conductors already occupying that space. When Jefferson Electric, my company, is charging for a service like this, we're going to take into consideration how crowded the panel is and how many circuits need to be relocated. When the circuits are in the in the four to ten range, we're probably a service charge and another hundred hundred bucks for this service, 150, 200 dollars all in. But in a larger panel like this, we're in the three to five hundred dollar range to perform this service to make a dedicated trip to your house to correct one electrical panel in this condition. Hey, if that's been helpful, subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money and check out our next video here.